What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Sun is in my eyes, but we're outside the Rio right now. You haven't seen that many tournament vlogs here from the Rio and the WSOP, mainly because we've busted them way too quickly. I'm hoping today we can turn things around. Um, we've played like three or four WSOP bracelet events so far and not a whole lot of action. We've busted really, really quickly or nothing interesting has happened. So I'm hoping we can make a deep run today. This is uh, an event that I'm actually really excited, looking forward to playing in. It's a 20 $2,500 freeze out with a really uh, long and decent structure. So 40 minute blinds, we get 35,000 trips to start and hopefully we can run it up. This is gonna be a really fun event. I haven't found a cache yet in this WSOP live series. I'm trying to look for one today. It's a three day event, so it's gonna be a long one. I'm already out of breath from walking like 20 steps. It's really bad. Well, anyways, let's just get into it. Let's get the cards in the air. Let's go. With inflation at its 30 year high, diversifying your portfolio with alternative assets is more important than ever. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm looking to park my poker earnings in an investment that is protected against inflation. That's why today's sponsor is Masterworks.io, a platform that lets you invest in art, a rarely talked about asset class that has proven to be one of the best inflation hedges out there. After all, the Wall Street Journal just reported this week that art is, quote, among the hottest markets on earth right now. Why is the art market so hot right now? Art has appreciated 14% a year compared to the S&P 500 return of 9.5% from 1995 to 2020. What's more, contemporary art has an extremely low correlation to the stock market, meaning art is an unparalleled diversification instrument. The only problem? Historically, it's been impossible to invest in high-end art unless you're a super high roller. Well, that ends now. Masterworks is the only platform that lets people like you and me invest in multi-million dollar paintings by famous artists like Picasso and Cause. Their platform makes the investing process really easy. You just buy shares of art pieces and then you wait for the painting to be sold or you can sell them into the secondary market just like stocks and crypto. In one example, the Banksy painting returned 32% last year. Pretty darn impressive. I think Masterworks is an awesome platform and a great way to diversify your portfolio. Luckily, by partnering with Masterworks.io, they've given me a link that lets you skip the wait list, which you can find in my description below. Check it out. Our freeze out tournament starts in level five with 35,000 starting in chips. We have eight, nine of clubs in the low jack and I open things up to 1200 with 500 big blinds. Action folds to the small blind player who three bets to 5,000. Right off the bat, we're gonna play a three bet pot. And interesting fact about this three better, he's actually the person I battled against a lot during my Venetian win who finished in fourth place. So certainly have a lot of history against this player. Definitely going to play this one in position post flop. Let's go with it, I call. The flop comes king seven eight rainbow with one club. Super dry flop and we have a gut shot straight draw. He C bets 3,500 and I'd expect him to do this with his entire range. You got some backdoor possibilities and we can bluff on some good runouts. So I decided to float and make the call and see a turn. Turn comes the eight of hearts and now we have second pair. And interestingly enough, he decides to check to me. And like I said, I said that we could definitely turn some equity and be able to bluff on some cards. And this one I think is a good one to start bluffing with. So I bet out 7,000, leaving myself a decent chunk to shove if need be. And he thinks about it before making the call. Now that things are getting pretty dicey, the river is the four of clubs. So any six makes a straight and we have all of the two pair plus combos while this player doesn't have a lot of it and mainly capped at one pair, maybe king x at best. He checks for a second time and I'm thinking, do we really want to put our tournament life at risk three minutes into sitting down and not even playing the blinds yet? Well, this is a better spot than any. We have a pair that we don't think is good. I rip it all in. It's 18.3 thousand. And now this player puts on his thinking cap and it's for a while. My heart is racing, pounding out of my chest. And can we really fade a call here? I don't want to bust this early into the session and tournaments. And ultimately he does call GG's. Unfortunately, this was a quick one. I show my hand and somehow he shows us eight, nine of diamonds for a chop. Never really thought that was the case. I literally was already standing up ready to get off the table. What a great call by him. And just like that, we sit back down, ready to continue playing. Who would have thought? 
Break number one, played for a level and a half, an hour so far, and found a way to lose a third of our starting stack already. Sitting with like 20K, 22K, started with 35. <sighs> so we're gonna come in with like 25 big blinds, just like opened a few hands, called a few hands, whiffed everything. Haven't won a pot yet, so you know, it's fine. I've been bricking a lot of these tournaments so far recently after the big one, and I guess it's just all like leveling itself back up and evening itself out, but uh, frustrating to not really get anything going in like the past like four, five tournaments I might have played. It's really crazy. <sighs> Hopefully we can just win some hands, but we've got like 25 bigs coming after break, and there it is. At, at the very least, we have the win 1600 that we can uh, hop in and play and try to add onto this vlog, hopefully. That would be cool. Um, that's what we can do. Looking forward to after I bust this to play in the win. But anyways, focus on this one. We'll see. Wish us luck. The second interesting hand follows in level 7. Blinds are 400, 800, 800. And we pick up ace 9 off suit in the hijack. I raise it up to 1600 and get the big blind to defend. And the flop comes 10, 7, 5, rainbow. He checks to me, and here, probably going to just check this one, not really connecting on it, and I think ace high can be good a lot of the time, so let's just see a turn. Turn comes a board pairing 7, brings in a backdoor flush raw, and now he starts off with a bet of 1500. I think now, as played, it's pretty easy to defend and call with ace high. We block some diamond draws, but who knows, we should be ahead a lot of the time, so we're off to a river. The river comes an inconsequential three, and here he bets 3,000, a pretty small bet considering the size of the pot, and I think that if I was ahead on the turn, then this three really shouldn't change anything. I should be ahead now, so I make the call, and he shows us three deuce of diamonds. Wow. Unfortunate here, our chip stack has dwindled to 16,000, and we are in jam territory. Moving forward into level 8, blinds are 500, 1,000, 1,000, and with 15,000 in stack, we pick up king-queen offsuit, the last hand of this level, and we've got 15 big blinds. Definitely just going to rip it all in because the next level, we will have even less big blinds, so I'm all in. We get ace-9 to make the call, so we are a 40% underdog to win, but still plenty of life to be had. Just got to spike a king or queen. We're off to a run out. Gotcha. Thanks. We'll see how it goes. Nice, Sadly, no improvement here, and this is where our $2,500 goes down the drain and into the player pool. All right, quick bust though out of the tournament. I mean, right now I can't even like sniff out a dinner break or even like being anywhere close to making the money. <laughs> My tournament history for the last uh, week or two right now, it's been, it's been silly. I haven't found even close to cashing in any tournaments or events since besides the one. And I don't know, man, I'm not complaining. It's just like the variance of tournaments, but we're snap going to the win. There's a $1,600 tournament there and we're probably going to buy in with 25 big blinds. <laughs> So um, it doesn't really matter like how many big ones you buy into. It's like the same thing regardless. It's just like a different strategy. And I really am confident more in my like 30 and below big blind game. So there's that, but quick death in the Rio once again, I literally like cannot even play in a, the, the deepest tournament I ever ran was the PLO one. It's, it's crazy. So going to the win, it's, it's right over there. It's really close. So let's just get there to the win. The life of a wannabe tournament grinder. Not only are we at the win about uh, five, six, seven minutes later, we also registered into an online tournament that we're gonna play on our phone. Dual tourney style. I don't know, I'm kind of hooked on these tournaments and uh, this is for a WSOP ring, so who knows? I cashed in it yesterday, like min cashed more or less, but that's what we're doing right now. Tourneys on tourneys on tourneys. It's kind of what I'm really into right now and just really like hooked on and obsessed with, so. <sighs> Just um, gonna need to catch some run good, catch some cards, because I've been cards out the past few ones, and uh, maybe we can run it up, who knows. But here's to at least taking a shot and seeing how it goes. Here at the win, buying in for 30 big blinds in level eight. Blinds are 500, 1,000, 1,000, and we pick up eight, seven of hearts in the cutoff. I raise it up to 2,000 here, and the big blind decides to defend, and we're off to a flop of ace, 10, eight, rainbow. 
He checks to me on these ace high boards. We actually have a pair this time. I decided to bet out 1500, starting to bluff at this one. And for 1500, he makes the call. The turn is the king of hearts. Not really a card that's going to slow us down, although obviously our hand doesn't improve. He checks to me, and I'm going to continue betting, and I bet out a larger amount to 5000 And for 5000 he comes along again. Oh boy. Let's go to a river which comes the Jack of Hearts. Any queen makes a straight now, and we've just got a pair of eights. He checks for a third time, and this time, as played, I don't think he's going to have too many queen X's in his hand, unless he just has, like, ace-queen specifically, which seems super strong to not 3-bet. And just like the last tourney, first hand in, screw it. I'm just going to have to bluff and go all in and rip it in his face. I jam, and luckily... Unlike last tournament, he folds, so we win a hand. So just like that, this tournament is already going better than the last one, just a few minutes in. All I have to report is that <clears throat> we made it to a dinner break today, so that's a win. Made it not because, uh, you know, we played well or anything, but because we registered like an hour before the dinner break started, and we survived an hour. We have like 42k in chips starting of uh, 30, so... At least we chipped up a little bit, but um, yeah, we're gonna play till a while. 11% is left in the field, so out of the 670 entrants in so far, we'll probably play till 70, 75, something like that. So it's gonna be a long night. There's like 330 left. Got some time, let's just try to chip up. The last hand issue came from level eight, and this time we're in level 11. Lines are 1,000, 2,000, 2,000, and we're just chipping down with nothing significant to play. Super card dead. But in the next out, we pick up king, queen offsuit under the gun, and I raise it up to 4,000. We get the hijack to jam. So that's not great for me. And then the big line decides to rip it all in as well. I'm just gonna snap fold this. It's just super frustrating to not have any spots to get it in with when I have a really short stack, but we end up seeing ace king versus ace queen. So for the hypothetical sweat, we were 100% dominated and crushed both ways. So I'm glad I got out of there, but here, going to need to find a way to get some chips in the middle. In the following hand, level 12, blinds are 1,500, 2,500, 2,500, and we finally pick up a hand. Pocket jacks in the cutoff with only 10 big blinds. There's an early position open, and this is just going to be a very easy shove. So I ship it, rip it all in, really hoping for a call. I'm in desperate need of a double up, but sadly, action folds to the early position player, who ends up folding 6-7 of diamonds face up. Can't even get action with my small stack, but at least we're finally chipping up after hours of card death. So really not picking up a hand. We are about 100 away from making it to day two and making it in the money. 78 players advance with 189 players left. We are in desperate need to chip up. The next significant spot we get into, ace-queen offsuit on the button. 32,000 in stack, a big stack under the gun opens it up to 5.5 thousand. Well, action folds to me and I finally have a hand to jam. So I close my eyes, I rip it all in, fold to the under the gun player and he calls. Show my hand and we are up against ace 10 off suit. We are a huge favorite to double in a much needed scenario. Hit that like button because I really need this to happen. And this video could also last a little bit longer. Let's go to a run out. See what happens. Thank God we found the run out we needed. Finally have a chance to chip up and run deep in this tournament. We are back to 72,000 in chips. We hold and we've got life. Break number two, quick little update. <sighs> really frustrating to fold for two hours straight, but we successfully did it, found the double, and now we have 30 bigs. I think we need like 110 people to bust, 100 people to bust actually, and we make day two. Got 30 bigs in a dream. Let's go, we just need a shot, we need a chance. We progress to level 13. Blinds are 2,000, 3,000, 3,000, 72K in stack, and we pick up ace, king, off suit. We're in the hijack and the plus one player opens a 6,000. Here onto me, definitely an easy spot to three bet with the premium. I three bet to 18,000. And now onto the button player who thinks for a while and has a 75,000 chip stack and jams. It folds to this plus one player who doesn't take too long before also committing his entire stack as well of 62,000. Oh my God. Onto me, 
72,000 in stack. It seems like an amazing spot to triple up with give or take 24 big blinds. Folding ace king has been the right move in the past with the Venetian tournament specifically, but found a good spot to get it in here and potentially win and have a massive stack for this tournament. If we did four hours playing so far, let's get it. I make the call. The button shows pocket jacks. The plus one player shows pocket kings. Oh no, this is dire. This is not looking good for us. We're off to a run out. Things look bad, but then the river is an ace. No freaking way. The ace from space on the river. And just like that, we find the massive triple up in the worst suck out fashion ever. Sucking out against kings there really sucks as we only had three live outs and we find it on the river. A pile of chips gets pushed our way and feeling like the luckiest person ever in the room. We are in this tournament ready to go with over 200,000 in our stack. Next interesting spot, pocket fives in the cutoff. I raise it up to 6,000 when action folds to me. The button folds. The small blind has other intentions. He decides to rip it all in. It's 48,000. The big blind folds and for 16 big blinds, definitely going to defend our open here and call and hope for a race. And that we are, we're up against King Jack off suits and let's just try to hold as a 51% favorite. The red out comes pretty darn good for us. And just like that, we are chipping up in a huge way. The good news is that now we have a bunch of chips in front of us, but the bad news is all of a sudden that small blind player's seat gets filled up by Alex Foxen a super pro two-time poker player of the year most recently in 2019. He has over 19 million dollars earned in live tournament earnings. We are in for a battle as he's on my left. It's gonna be a fun ride. Let's strap in. Progressing to level 14 blinds are 2,000, 4,000, 4,000 and we have king queen offsuit on the button. There's a plus one open to 8,000 and here on the button offsuit broadways they're going to be a three bet here, I think, and I decided to size to 24,000. Not sure if I needed to do this, but this time I did. Anyways, it falls to the plus one and he calls. The flop comes ace, deuce, deuce, rainbow. Decent looking flop for our three betting range. So when he checks to me, I bet out 18,000 and he doesn't fold. He ends up calling. So looking at his physical tells, seems like he's all over this board and I am all out of this hand. The turn comes a five, action's gonna go check, check. The river comes a jack, and once again, I'm gonna check and give the hell up after this hand, and he shows us ace queen. So clearly uh, messed up on this one here, kind of ran into it, but at least we didn't lose any more like we used to, but trying to barrel off and bluff. All right, here's the battle that we talked about. We pick up queen jack of diamonds and plus one, I raise it up to 8,000 and Foxen makes the call in the low jack. We're gonna battle this one out, heads up, out of position. The flop comes queen seven, three, two clubs. I decided to bet out 5,000. Pretty small bets, unfortunately. A Little bit of a misclick, I meant to do 10,000, but whatever. But for 5,000, he also thinks that it's a little too small and raises to 21,000. And now I'm already deep in my head, not sure if I induce this with my misclick and small sizing. Is he doing this standardly with a good hand? But I think our hand's a little too strong to fold. We have top pair and his raises here for value seems super thin and super slim because there's not many combos of two pairs here. I decide to make the call and evaluate a turn. The turn comes the Jack of Clubs. Improved to top two and now it's gonna be hard for us to find many folds. I check and he sizes up to 45,000. Wow, pretty large sizing. And if I call here, the pot's gonna balloon up to 150,000. And I have about a pot sized bet behind. Here, I'm thinking I just lose to some sets that seem really rare and flush draws that he was repping on the flop. It's ambitious to think that we're gonna fold two pair right now as played. So I make the call and we're battling it out against the best. The river comes the four of clubs. This sucks. So I'm going to check this one just giving up here as there's four to a flush 
and he actually checks it back. I show two pair, and I guess this horrible river ended up saving us as he shows pocket sevens for the flopped set. Guess running pretty good with the clubs slowing down, but the dealer didn't have to give me a jack on the turn for two pair. In the following spot, level 15, blinds are 3,000, 5,000, 5,000, pick up pocket jacks under the gun and raise it up to 10,000. Fox in, once again, in plus two, three bets to 28,000. It folds to me and I have about 180,000 in stack and it's about 35 big blinds. And I think facing this three bet here, all the options are on the table. Certainly can call or just four bet rip it in our stack. And playing heads up against this guy seems like a nightmare. So taking the easy way out. Jax needs some protection. I just go for it. Four bet jams and he folds. So here's the end of the story. I won a pot against a player of the year guy and I'm satisfied. So we'll take it. All right, we're on another quick 10 minute break. Um, book room is totally empty, but this fucking line here, uh, there's just like a club going up. The Encore Beach Club is right next to this poker room and there's just music blasting left and right. Anyways, there's 30 people left to bust for us to make the money or at least make day two and then you'll have a second vlog coming up soon, but uh, we'll get, I'll try to survive. Got Alex Fox into our left. It's just ridiculous to have uh, an absolute crusher to my left in this tournament. Gonna battle it out, wish us luck, it's, it's gonna be tough. Moving on to level 16, blinds are 3,000, 6,000, 6,000, and we pick up ace nine of diamonds in the big blind. Plus one, you know, our friend Alex Foxen, he opens it up to 13,000, action folds to me, and definitely going to defend this one with a very playable ace, I make the call. The flop comes 10, nine, six, two spades, and a diamond here. I'm gonna check this one over to him, and he checks this back. Expected him to bet, but did not. We're off to see a turn, thinking our hand is good right now. The turn comes the three of diamonds. Much better card for me, for sure. We have a pair, not flush draw. A lot going on for us. So I decide to lead and bet out 14,000. And, oh god, he puts in a raise to 45,000. He's got like 100,000 behind. I cover a stack, and wow. This spot is just horrible. Against one of the better players here, I just have really good equity, but not much to play for if I make the call and brick out or miss. So given we're out of position, I feel like we're just handcuffed to jamming or folding. And I guess he can have some bluffs as played, maybe some two over cards and a straight draw. I don't really know, but in the real time, I ended up just ripping it all in. We have really good equity. And of course he snaps it off with pocket tens. Fuck me. Gonna need to see a red river. The river does not bring that, so that's unfortunate. And we're gonna pay him his money and chips. Got totally outplayed and totally owned in this hand, and all of a sudden, our big stack is now crippled to 95,000. Back to the 15 big blind grind. Here we are 10 away from the money with 88 players left. Our stack is tiny and gonna need some help to double up. Onto level 17, one of the last levels of the day. Picking up king queen offsuit in the cutoff. There's a hijack open to 16,000 and we have 13 big blinds and a dream. I'm in there for sure. I rip it all in, even though we are six left to the money. Gonna need to win this one or just take down the dead money in the middle. And of course, why wouldn't our buddy Alex Fox and anyone else at the table could be involved, but he jams his stack that I contributed to. Action folds around and we're up against pocket queens. So once again, in horrible shape and the flop comes brick city for us. Turn brick, river, king, <laughs> no way again. The dirty river, we are living the bink city life right now. That river is so good and can be so bad for other players, but I'm glad I'm on the right side of it. Somehow, some way, find another super dirty suck out. And just like that, it looks like we are in decent shape to survive day one and bag for day two to make in the money. One of the last interesting hands of note of the tonight, we pick up ace king of hearts in the cutoff. I open it up to 16,000. Now, Alex in the small blinds, why wouldn't he be involved? It seems like we're only playing against him in this table. He three bets to 46,000 with a fairly short stack now. Big blind folds and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go all in with this pretty hand. I jam and 
why wouldn't he have aces? Like, really? Like, you could have had any other two cards and we'd be okay against ace-king and be flipping. <sighs> Can we somehow suck out again? Who knows? The run out? No, no, not this time, unfortunately. Can't suck out two times in a row and get it in really bad and win. So now our stack is back to being crippled to 80,000 with 10 big blinds. And luckily, we hold on and make the money and move on to day two. Oh, a long day, wrapping it up with a bag. It's a small one. We'll be in uh, back at day two, automatically made the money, and we'll have 12 big blinds. But I just like can't believe how playing against a guy as good as Alex Foxen just got me so just rattled. That ace nine hand, like, it's like I couldn't have gotten owned worse in that hand. Like, at least I had some equity with the diamonds, but oh my god, I couldn't have gotten owned any harder in that hand. Um, god, okay, and there's like the Encore Beach Club over there, just like so loud having a blast on a Thursday night. Anyways, yeah, back to 102,000. Blinds will be 4K, 8K, 8K. Gonna need some luck for day two, but we auto automatically made the money. At the very least, um, we have that. I don't know, it depends on how day two is gonna go. Maybe we'll wrap it into this vlog or parlay it with the next vlog, but thanks so much for watching. If this is the end of the video, that means maybe there might've been a good run in day two. Crossing your fingers, but thanks so much for sticking to the end. I swear to God, I hope I'm not on Alex Foxen's table again for day two, because I just can't, can't hang. Just like simply cannot hang against that caliber of a player. Um, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Upwards and onwards to day two. Hopefully you enjoy these tournament vlogs. They are definitely a clusterfuck of a shit show. Well, thanks for watching. Peace.